Can you imagine being human resources director for the staff on a cruise ship? With crew from all over the world and problems that can only be resolved at sea, it must be a very complicated job with endless scenarios. And that's a life of Beth Van Sant, as she tells us how she empowers women on board to work hard and better their lives. I would like to introduce you today to Beth Van Sant. Beth is from the United States, specifically from Texas, and she began her career actually at sea. You began that career on Radiance of the Seas in 2015. You were an avid cruiser at that time, I understand. And after retiring from American Airlines after almost 30 years, she decided to work at sea. So Beth joined Azamara in 2016 and has loved every minute of her life at sea. Beth is proud to work with such a talented crew on the Pursuit ship and considers them her family at sea. When Beth is on vacation, she usually can be found cruising to new destinations with her recently married son and her three sisters. So welcome, Beth Vincent. Well, thank you. Thank you, thank you. We're Glad delighted to, be here. to have you. Now, you worked for 30 years for Americans, so tell me a little bit about that career and what you were doing. So that was a fascinating career, and I fell into it by accident. I had some friends that were flight attendants, and they said, hey, why don't you come and work for American Airlines? I was freshly out of college, and we can go fly around for a while until we all get real jobs. So I started in reservations, answering the phone. And at that, name, at that point, my name was Beth Penrose, so I was, hi, American Airlines, Beth Penrose, how can I help you, first class or coach? So I still say some of the words that we use back in reservations. So I was in reservations for a while, and then I ended up learning about HR. Really loved it. My college background is in, my degree is in psychology. So uh, there's a lot of HR that uses psychology, and I really felt like that might be a spot for me. And the more I talked to HR professionals, the more I realized I really did want to work in HR. So I started, oh gosh, 25 years ago in HR, and American Airlines was phenomenal. They taught me everything I know. They taught me how to be a good HR professional. They taught me how to be a good investigator. They taught me how to treat people with dignity and respect, and I've carried that through my entire career. And that led me to working on cruise ships. I knew that I went up through the company. I held probably 10 or 12 jobs at American, and the one that, when I left, I was the director of corporate policy. And I'm just not a corporate girl. My favorite job was when I was out at the airport as the HR manager of DFW and working with the crew there, the staff. And I had, oh gosh, 4,000 crew members, both on board the aircraft, uh, guys that worked in the belly of the aircraft, maintenance teams, and then also the folks who worked at the airport on the counters. So it was an amazing, amazing job, and I loved it. And I missed that. And I had grown up so much in the company at American that I knew that there was really no going back there. And it was time for me to try something new. So I started talking to HR managers when I was cruising. And the more I learned about the job, the more I loved it. So I uh, talked to my friends at American and said, hey, I want to go pursue a new career. They were so, so, so supportive. And I was hired with Royal Caribbean. Well, that's interesting. American must have a situation where they have an HR director over every one of their key cities, is that it? Over or? the big hubs. At that point we did. I'm sure the structure has changed a little bit, but at that time we had directors out at the hub and we would report into one person in at headquarters. Matter of fact, when I started, that's where I started. It was called Field Human Resources, all the human resources out in the field. And I was one of the headquarters people responsible for ensuring we were communicating well with everybody that was out there in the field that we were consistent with how we were applying our policies and procedures and that's that was my first taste and then I grew 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 and absolutely fell in love with it. What did you not like about the corporate side? So when you are working for a huge company of 120,000 people trying to change policies that are steeped in excellent brilliant military history can be difficult to change. And I went home and I did not feel like I'd made a difference in anybody's life that day. And I need that for my own 
growth for my own soul. And uh, when I was working out at the airport, individually with these wonderful people at the airport, I felt went home and felt like I made a difference. And I'm able to have that here on the ship as well. I, I am able to support our crew members, help them out, look for ways to make their life a little easier on board. And that, that matters to me. Well, in fact, I've had at least one person of the crew tell me that HR even occasionally arranges trips for them to take when you're at a port. Yes. And yes. so they can see a little bit. Yes. We try to get crew tours pulled together. And that can be challenging, but we do all we can to get out with the different tour operators because the crew are not going to make as much money as the guests are able to spend on tours. So we really try to get something that's affordable, a lot of fun, and something they're interested in. When we were in Israel, that was a huge hit with the crew. And we ended up taking, oh gosh, four different groups out to different places in Israel. And it was fascinating. It was wonderful. It was good to see everybody out there and enjoying it. What do you find are the differences between being an HR director on a ship where they really are not at home? Right. Versus, I mean, their their home is the ship, so they're they're away from their home home for yes. like we all have two six homes. months or something. Yes, we have our family in our country, and then we have our family at sea. And uh, the differences are, well, the first one, of course, is it's really interesting to live with people and work with them. So, you know, it's, it, the, the lines get blurred. Mm -hmm. You really, really care about these people. I understand what they're going through. I know about homesickness. I know about missing your family. So we really try to take care of each other on board. And we check in with each other. How are you doing? Have you talked to your family? How's everybody doing? How's your daughter? How's your wife? Uh, many of the people on board here have family at home that are brand new babies or their wives are expecting. And they may have a wife that gives birth while they're on board. So when we send them home, they're going home for the first time to meet their baby. So a lot of things that uh, really matter in people's lives happen when they're on board. And what do you find is, are some of the differences in the HR perspectives? Probably some of the differences. That is the original question you asked right. that I need to answer. <laughs> uh, the, the living with people and okay. as well as working with them, it does bring a different dynamic. Um, also, I thought I would have more issues with cultural diversity than I do. When I worked at American, we would have issues with different cultures battling. And I don't find that here to the extent that I thought I would. We have 45 to 50 countries represented at any given time. At home, some of these countries are at war with each other. But when they're on board, these crew members treat each other with respect. We have a lot of fun. They're laughing and playing. There, You can see them in the crew mess together. You can see them in the crew bar together. They're going out together shoreside. So it really is a different dynamic than it would be either at home or what I found to be in the States working as HR. You know, I never thought about being from countries that might be at war with each other and having that as a one dynamic. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And some of these countries have a lot of history with each other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, these crew members may have parents or grandparents who are not, who would not be as comfortable with them uh, on board this friendly with other crew members. So it's, it's an interesting dynamic. Do you get involved if somebody is unhappy with their roommate or? We do, I do. Uh, they come and talk to us. We, Number one, we try to see what's going on and make sure everybody's okay and safe and it's not a, a difficult situation where we're gonna have anybody, you know, hitting each other or doing anything yeah, right. crazy. But it's usually just, I just don't enjoy living with this person. They have a different schedule than I do. We have different habits. And we also try to put people where we can with fellow countrymen. A lot of times that does make them feel more comfortable. And we ask them, would you prefer to be with someone else? Or who, who would you like to be with? And if you want to be with a certain crew member, we are more than happy to let you do that. We also have crew members on board who date, and we allow them to cohabitate as well if they want to. We really try to make sure that folks are happy with their living situation. Have you had any marriages? We have. We have. We've had quite a few. So before I got on board, this is years and years ago, I know Captain met his wife on board. I believe our chef met her husband on board. They recently got married. They got married about a year and a half ago. And quite a few people, quite a few people. Lots of marriages, probably 20% of the crew, 10 to 20% of the crew 
have relationships on board or are married to each other. So and a decent amount. Do you try to keep those people together we from do. contract to contract? We do. We do. We want them to be able to work together if they want. And so we work with the schedulers to make sure they're on the same ship, same sign-on date, same sign-off date, where we can. And I bet they love that. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that makes a huge difference. Absolutely. Rather than being just at home waiting. Yes. It can be challenging if they are in jobs that we don't have a lot of that job on the ship. Perfect example, mm -hmm. I had an HR specialist on board who does all of our crew events and training, and she was dating someone on the bridge. And she ended up moving to Royal because it was a wonderful opportunity for her to go into training, but we couldn't send him as well. So we're going to work to try to get them back together as soon as we can with their jobs. So, But they're at home together, so that's the nice part. What's special to you about Azamara? Oh, hands down, the crew. Hands, hands down. These are the most exceptional people. Genuine, genuine, authentic loving people. They're good with our guests, they're good with each other. The way they treat the guests every day in front of the house is how they treat me and other crew members behind the house, in the, in the back of the house. And they're wonderful. Good hearts. Good hearts. I love working with them. What's the most difficult thing you've ever had to do, whether you're talking about HR here or with American or somewhere else? What's the hardest thing you've had to do? Uh, getting a phone call that someone's family member has died mm -hmm. and to pull them in and help them with that message and get them in touch with their family and get them home as quickly as possible. You know, Today we're at sea. There are times where we get a phone call and we're not in a port for two or three or four days and we can't get the person home fast enough. We're trying to get them home and, and we're at sea and can't, can't get there. But we do try the minute we're in port to get them to their to their home destination as soon as we can when that happens. But that is difficult. We have we have deaths. We have people who come in and say, hey, my grandmother's dying. I need to go home. And again, we try to get them home as quickly as possible. I've got somebody signing off tomorrow that's getting home to his mom, trying to get there. So it's that's probably the hardest part. I can understand that would be very difficult, especially for people that are so far away. Right. And it may take them days to get home right. just because they're in another part of the world. Right. And, you know, I'm sure it's the longest two days ever as you're waiting to get to the port and then another two long days to get home. To your point, it can take a long time and I can't imagine that constant worry for those four days for those crew. I find for most people, what happened in their early life often affects who they are today. For you, was that true and how did it affect you? It is. So I had quite an interesting childhood. I had a wonderful childhood. My mom and dad truly loved each other, truly loved we three kids. I have two other sisters that I grew up with and then one that has married into the family. So that's why I now have three sisters. And we had a wonderful loving household. So when you were in, about 14, you're, you were in a car accident? Yes, mom had a car accident. It was kind of funny, dad was in, the hospital for her back surgery and a congenital defect. He's fine. And then uh, mom and I and the two younger girls were, they were in the back seat, were coming home and the car went out, all of the power of the car went out and we went off the road. Mom tried to protect me, threw herself against me and her back hit the steering wheel. Fast forward, she had to have back surgery and during that time she received blood that was tainted with hepatitis. Oh, which dear. Yeah. So fast forward from that, she ended up with liver disease and a cirrhotic liver and ended up needing a liver transplant. This was many, many years that this took place. So she was sick when I was young. Once she hurt her back, it just, she continued to have health problems. She passed away in 2000. So this was back in 19, in the 70s. So it was that long ago that she, she was ill for 30 years. So I was lucky enough to have mom when she was healthy. My poor baby sister did not get that and had a different upbringing because mom was always sick. For one of the years, mom was in the hospital for 36 of the 52 weeks. So Amy would come home and say, hey, Beth, can I go out and play? And I'd be like, mom's home, go ask mom. So I ended up, my sisters both are convinced I raised them. I don't think that's truly true, but I had to be a little bit of a mom. And so I grew up very quickly. I was cooking, I was cleaning, I was doing laundry. And as I grew older and started to work with people, I became, it allowed me to really understand that 
uh, having an illness in a family or having things that go on can impact every moment of your day and that you have to help people through some of those difficult points. And I think that makes me a better HR manager. I am very maternal anyway, so all of the HR work feeds into that. And I do feel like I have 400 kids on board that I'm very close to. But a lot of that is shaped from, you know, just being a caregiver when I was younger. I grew up in a situation very similar to that, so I can totally relate to what you're talking about. And it was a car accident that created mine oh, wow. as well. So, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. that's t- it's tough. It is. Uh, however, it gives you a strength, don't Absolutely. you Absolutely. It made me who I am, and I wouldn't trade that. I would not trade that. I think my mom paid a huge debt for the entire family because she raised three amazing women who are out in the community doing good things, all really trying to help the world be a better place. And we all, we that's mom. That was mom that did that for us. And it makes you appreciate how much she gave and how much she sacrificed. Yes. Yes. But sometimes we don't appreciate that when we're in the middle of it. Oh, uh, we absolutely don't. Appreciate it more maybe after Absolutely. That. Absolutely. Matter of fact, after mom passed away, that is when all of us sat back and said, wow, we really now understand the impact she had on our life. And she f- did not feel that she was very smart. She was never college educated, but she was the smartest, funniest person in our family and probably the least educated, but the one who made the biggest impact on all of us. Amazing woman, amazing woman. How do you feel in your role as HR that you have contributed to the empowerment of women? So I love to see women progress and to do everything I can to coach and help women progress. There are some women from some of these countries who that's not a norm in their country. So being from America, I'm able to help push and show how things can be and be able to show other women, here are some things that you can do to change your life. Today, tomorrow, the future, you can change it for your kids. And it's great to see them growing up in getting more stripes and making more money and walking around so proud of all the things that they're doing. It's fantastic. One of the favorite things that I love to do is see people promoted and help them help them get to a new place, a new job, make more money. Well, it sounds like you You're just in the right position. I am. And you found that match for yourself. I am absolutely in the right place. I'm where I'm supposed to be. I do know that. So what's your next chapter look like? And what when is that out there? And what are you gonna do? So it's a fun conversation with my family because my son, as I said, was recently married, and he and his wife are probably gonna start a family in the next couple of years. And I know I'm going to want to be home with a grandbaby and I'm going to be torn because I'm going to also want to continue to sail. So we're we're all talking about that. What does that look like? What do we do? Can the baby just come with me on the ship and be raised on the ship? Uh, So we're working through that. I don't know what my next chapter is. I know that I'm loving it here. I'm loving that I, I feel like I make a difference that matters to me. And I don't see changing that anytime soon. What's the one thing that you might miss that you can't have when you're on the ship? Hmm, That's a good question. The travel is wonderful. There are days that it's so crazy I don't get out, but I do every day try to get out and walk the decks. I call it going to church. When I need a little break, I tell my team, hey, team, I'm going to go to church, and they know that I'm going to go out and walk and talk and say hi to mom and dad who are gone and just have a little alone time. So that is wonderful. The sea calls to me. I really love being at sea. And so I th- I miss that when I'm home, which is one of the reasons we go cruising all the time, because I love to be on the ocean. I really do love it. If you had uh, one thing that you'd say you miss it, and I've had people tell me I miss having a football. I had another person say I miss having my beauty, same beauty products that I really like if I run out. Is there anything that you could think of that would be your thing that you miss most? So, of course, it's the family. But beyond that, it's the cats and the dogs. I miss having the animals. I don't get to cuddle up with an animal at night and pet on a cat and play with the puppy. And I so I miss them. I miss them a lot. Yeah, that's the big thing for me. Well, it sounds like you've you've hit the right match, though, for yourself. I have. Everybody doesn't. And it's great that you have. I know. What would you, what advice would you give to young people today in general? uh, And then if they are deciding that this is something they might want to do? Uh, First thing I would say is don't be afraid of change. 
seek it out. If you're not exceptionally happy with what you're doing, change it. You're the only one that can change it. You have that power and everyone has that power. I do know there are folks in countries with a lot of difficult areas and a lot of difficulties that they have to face. But I've also seen some amazing people make it through that and still just be amazing coming out of that. So encourage people that you can always change. The other thing I would encourage young people is it's never too old to change because I changed my career when I was 53 years old and decided I was going to just start an entire new chapter and have not looked back. So it's never too old to change either. If you're not in a good place, do something new. I don't care if you're 50, 60, 70, 80, 25. Do what you love. Find something that you love. This is not a dress rehearsal. This is it. This is the shot that we get. So and you only really get that one shot. As far as we know. How long that's going to be, as far as we know. As far as we know. Yeah. This is it. Yes. Yes. Well, thank you so much, Beth, for your time. Have you got anything else that you'd like to leave with our listeners? No, just thank you for sharing the message and helping empower women. I think that's an exceptional message, and I think that we can all hear that. We need to hear that every day. I think that's a great message. So thanks over for all that you're doing again. over and over every day, every day. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for joining us. We hope you're inspired to tell everyone about our podcasts. Join our community by subscribing to our website, trailblazersimpact.com. And remember, you must learn a new way to think before you can master a new way to be.